rage mode. Hey everyone, today I'll be explaining the many aspects of rage mode and to make the many tricks, tips, and skips available to you because you're all capable of unlocking the potential. So let's get into it. Before starting with missions, a list and or display general tips. Top tier weapons are incendiary shotgun, silence DMR, and the grenade launcher. Although the weapon is situational for the most part, which means during some sections you may use the grenade launcher to take out large groups of enemies, and most of the time you won't be using the grenade launcher. Despite the status of all the weapons listed, you will not always be limited or desired to select these weapons. So, you don't necessarily need to have these weapons on you at all times. You may or may not pick up a narrow weapon of choice to fit the situation. Whether you choose to be on the move or reduce yourself to precise decision making, it's up to you. I prefer to switch between both playstyles to prioritize surviving. Avoid taking hostages as cover. Use hostages to reposition yourself if enemies are not aggro. So that means they're not firing at you. And you haven't done enough to have them to fire at you. Which means you don't kill any of them or you don't injure any of them. Slide from cover to cover with focus or cloak included. Understand the moment you're compromised, which means stealth killing and you're spotted, you'll be bombarded with grenades. If you are spotted in an area, do not run back around the area you were spotted from, as the enemies are going to be spraying and praying because of where you were spotted from. Cloak and slide into the enemies as to avoid the enemy from instantly shooting you. Perform the sequence on enemies outside the combat zone, snap their neck for focus meter, and you should keep in mind it's possible that enemies discharge their firearms after being knocked out and they can even hit you in the grab animation. So as you're grabbing them and they're discharging their weapon because they got hit with the slide, those rounds can hit you and kill you instantly. So it's really important to know when to do the slide, grab, and snap because with another enemy nearby, that's going to be a really tough situation when you get hit and then all your armor gone, all your health gone, so. For certain missions, you may prefer a ranged approach. Never use lasers for stealth and limit your flashlight use. If you need focus while killing and stealth, use cloak, peek out of cover, fire, and then walk back into cover and then wait for cloak to regen or repeat. Hey guys, really quick focus explanation here, so only use focus to line up the headshot, then disable focus and shoot. Okay, continue. When on the move, it is important to slide and avoid being hit. You go around and pick up armor plates, you shoot the helmets off of dead enemies for armor value, so if you didn't know that, uh, helmets count towards armor. Not masks though, not the masks on cultists. And then you also check ammo every so often, and you want to know where the enemies are at all times. So if you need to go and snap one's neck, you go ahead and do that because you know where all the enemies are. They're definitely not near the one you went ahead and killed. And so and it's like there's a DMR nearby, you need to know where the DMR is so that you're not popped immediately. So very important stuff. So for Site 14. You're going to be sure to cloak in the stealth sections because you may be visible in some areas and the rage mode enemies are very perceptive. So they will see you instantly if you don't use cloak in certain areas. So the very beginning of the game, tutorial on stealth. So in the first combat encounter, allow enemies other than one to continue moving and then snap the neck of the first one if possible and then perform the snap on the remaining enemies. For the next encounters, take advantage of the fire extinguishers and try again and again if you die. And remember the tips from earlier and never stop using slide. You knock in the enemies that go flying, that gives you a chance to kill some enemy that's still up, and then run over and grab the one that's still on the ground, snap them. You know, you just, it's consistency and it's being resilient and it's never stopping because you will die. But you will reach those checkpoints and you keep going. You keep on going. When you reach this elevator portion, eliminate the first wave of enemies and then enter the elevator to avoid the second. So you can just 
you get inside the elevator and skip all those enemies. You don't have to play around with those enemies. So it's really, really easy, really simple. So uh, in the shield ambush, you gotta slide into a shield, and then you use focus while you're close up against another shield to trigger their melee animation. And as soon as they do that, you just take the shotgun and boom, you just pop them in the head. So you'll result in a quick kill if you shoot them correctly. Or you may take melee damage and die. It depends. So it's going to help you take them out really fast. And of course, if something goes wrong, you just slide into the next one and grab them and snap them. And slide into the next one, rinse and repeat. In this hallway, it's really easy to avoid the enemies. You just got to use your cloak good enough and then eventually just pass by them. Same goes for this area, although ignoring the enemies will cause you trouble if you choose to modify your weapons at the bench, so it depends. So you can avoid the Talon Company in this area, um, but it's fun to bury the professionals, you know. When you reach the loading bay, keep close to the active elevators that are eventually going to open. This area is really the only time you'll be using the hostages as cover especially the shield ones. If you find shield ones, those are really good for helping you out. In the Sierra 4 area, toss the nade towards one elevator. Hope you save the rest of your grenades though, because you'll be able to spam the hell out of those things that the enemies coming out of the end room where the chief of security is leading all the enemies out to come and kill you. So whenever you reach that area, you just stand on top of some up high shelf down where the loading bay is and you just yeet them grenades and hope it kills all the enemies or disperses or dispatches a large portion of them so that makes your job a lot easier to kill the rest of them off alrighty then the part recently shown in the video is a general overview of a rage mode mission meaning that's the end of in-depth analysis so from now on I'm just going to be talking about the highlights of each mission on the Pandora Institute, when you approach the courtyard area, stealth is a big player here. It's important to utilize all the tips previously mentioned in the beginning of the video. The DMR is helpful regardless if it is suppressed or not, and the rifle can be good for medium range. The zombie mothman section is all about speed and avoiding, so it's probably the easiest thing here. So, you slide around the path um, in those forced escape or getaway sections, and then you smack a zombie and grab them and throw them in the power cores while you avoid their ranged attack when it comes to a ranged attack being in the first section where you encounter all of them, and then the second section where you smack them and then you grab them in a very fast sequence to go and throw them in the power cores. Mothman is about attention. So you gotta be real aware of where it is in both occurrences and then slide to avoid its grab because that thing is deadly. So, Jorvik Castle. This one is tough. This one is... Mmm. This one is no. This one is very no. So the enemies, most of which do, uh, the enemies do not have armor plates. And so you'll use stealth wherever it is possible. Just use stealth nearly all the time. Because you, you will need it. And you will also have mo uh, the task force members do most of the work for you in areas where they are present. So please, just, you gotta stick to being in the shadows and surviving. And knowing the enemies are about to round a corner and try and get you out. And you gotta use grenades in sections too. You gotta throw them grenades everywhere. You gotta make sure they're dead. For the enforcer, use focus and a shotgun. Just get up in his face with it. Just smack him in the face with it. Blast him in the face with it. He has a minigun, but it's not much of a match against your focus and shotgun. You'll do so much damage and you'll speed up the fight a lot more. The Patriarch, and boy do I got a lot to say about this one. So you'll use either side of the arena as a post. It will be your last stand right there. Not necessarily. But the railing of the elevated surfaces where the stairs are, as you can see on the screen possibly, have openings. So you'll use those openings with the incendiary shotgun 
to slowly drain the health of the patriarch. You're going to avoid direct engagements with them, meaning you're going to not be in his line of sight nearly at all. So, all you'll need to do is just hit him with the incendiary rounds, and then hide behind a corner, and then you just keep on doing that. And so when cultists spawn in, use your shotgun to defend yourself from firebomb cultists. So, they'll turn into those lingering death piles that do a lot of damage. So you gotta be watchful, and you gotta be careful, and you gotta understand when, uh, they're finished that the ranged cultists, which will use your focus to control the population of those boys, they're eventually going to run up to the stairs and try to bop you. So on the second wave, a flesh golem was going to spawn. So there will likely be many bolt launchers in the area at that point. So you're going to use those. And but So the uh, good news is that the patriarch should not return the battle while the flesh golem is active. The bad news, though, is that the flesh golem is a flesh golem, and it is there to kill you. Because, yay, we all like enemies that kill you instantly. So you gotta slide around and avoid those annoying attacks, which, most of the time, are instant death, you know? I hate this. I, I, I don't want to do that ever again, so that's why I'm here to tell you. Just slide around, you know? D just, just do it, guys, just do it. Site 83 is very easy. I promise you, it's as simple as just moving past all the enemies you can, and then using the explosives during the subject battle against the hazard soldiers when they come out of those elevators. It is so easy when you just get it all down. It ain't anything. It is a lot easier than every other mission here, so it's going to be no problem for you if you got past all the other missions so far. You're going to get through it, man. You're going to get through it. You're going to do it. You're going to do it. And then we have... Yay, our favorite mission. Our our ever favorite mission right here. The Horizon HQ. So the grenade launcher is very recommended for the beginning section. And then the DMR for the middle section. And then you gotta save that minigun for last. Or you'll pick it up off an enemy for the last section. So it's good to save a minigun for the Horizon one. Just like I said before, which is the enemy chopper sequence. So it's an unmodded minigun, and you use the focus, and you spray the helicopter for the duration that it is alive, and you just keep on spraying it in focus, and you don't gotta worry about any other enemies as soon as it's gone. It'll instantly trigger the objective to kill Anton once the helicopter is gone, and you won't need to worry about enemies because they will all be removed once the chopper is destroyed. So, very, very simple. Although Horizon H2 is our favorite mission, when you kill Anton, you'll receive the Rage Mode achievement. So that means we don't have to do the ending. We don't have to do the ending. Do you know how exciting that is? Do you know how amazing that is? That is that is fantastic. As long as you complete all the other side missions, and as long as you complete all the other main missions all together, then you should have the achievement. And speaking of side missions... When you play side missions, depending on which, depending on the environment, long range or close range, weapons and engagements, all, all together, just use the tips I provided, you know. If you come across a mission with the traitor crate, be ready to spawn TF-27 assault squads, preferably TF-27 assault squads. And you'll die after an autosave. It's like, it's a tactical dying. It's a tactical not alive. You just die, and you, you get an autosave after you die. Or before you die, you know. And then it, it resets the cost of the assault squads back to 1500. So you can just cheese your way through it. It's not fun. It's not fun. That's everything. That's everything I need to talk about. Wow. Wow, I, I, I'm concluding this definitely helpful guide. This guide that definitely prepared you for the hell that awaits. Oh my goodness, you are going to be in such torture. I feel for all of you, and I am so sorry that I'm doing this to you. So I definitely showed you how to play the game. So you go play it. You, you go play the game. Go play the game. Don't give up, though. Never give up when it comes to this challenge, because you will hate yourself for it. And then you won't want to try it once you give up. And then you'll feel even worse. So, you know, know what's best for your mental state at that point.
because you are going to laugh to yourself and you are going to be very upset with the game and you will likely want a refund. But the two hours is already over, child. So what you gonna do now?